Good morning. The first reading is from Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading is from Matthew 6, verses 9 through 15. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Any of the kids who would uh, like to enjoy their kids' time with Miss Serena, you can go at this point. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for your word. And Lord, as we come together once again, we ask that your Holy Spirit be the one that enables us to hear your word and to put your word into practice. Uh, we ask this in faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have been following a sermon series since the beginning of the year on the Lord's Prayer with the idea as we look at each section of the Lord's Prayer, we are asking the Lord, just as the early disciples did, Lord, teach us to pray. And each week we have looked at a little section of the Lord's Prayer, and today we come to that section on forgiveness. Um, just made me a little uneasy as I looked at my own life. And the Word of God does that. The Word of God does that. But what we want to do is, um, as we look at those words from the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We don't want to overlook the power that there are in that word, in those words. I found a quote this week. Uh, it's a quote from Martin Luther King. And he said this, that forgiveness is not an occasional act. It's a constant attitude. God is not someone <clears throat> who gives us, us an occasional kind act by forgiving us. Forgiveness is God's nature. That is something that he wants to demonstrate in his life to all of us, and he has. It's the heart of all Christianity. If there were no forgiveness, we would not be here. Our God is a forgiving God. And if I want to grow in my relationship with Jesus, I need to grow in my understanding and in my application of forgiveness. He loves me now, he forgives me now, but I want to grow in my understanding of God's forgiveness. Merely defining, merely giving a definition of forgiveness is not enough. I want to demonstrate it. So I'm asking, Lord, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to pray with forgiveness being a very important part of my prayer life. 
I don't want to be a person who can occasionally forgive somebody and appear very spiritual for doing it. I want forgiveness to be something that's a constant attitude, a constant working in my life. So this morning, we're going to look, well, how can we grow in forgiveness? We're going to look at four things, and it goes in line with the acronym of GROW, G-R-O-W. And we're going to look that, first of all, forgiveness is given. It's given by God. Secondly, that forgiveness is something that must be received. Uh, O would be forgiveness is something that's offered to other people. And forgiveness, finally, is our witness as Christians. First of all, forgiveness is given by God. Ephesians 1.7 says this, In him, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. In Jesus, we have forgiveness in accordance with God's grace. I always like the acronym that's on the screen there, too, that what is grace? Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. We have forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. He took our sins upon himself, and he died in our place. And God looks at us because sin was the reason Jesus came into this world. Sin is what separated us from God. And God, being a loving and compassionate God, extended and gave forgiveness to the world through his grace, through the working of Christ on the cross. And it's something he gives. Not conditionally, he gives unconditionally. It's a gift. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. Sometimes you can maybe feel as though you may deserve God's forgiveness more than other people, but you don't. Nobody deserves God's forgiveness. But God's forgiveness is something that is so, so incredible. Um, The thought that I do not have to stand before the judgment of God for my sins is something incredible. Think about that. Because of Jesus, because of the grace of God, I do not have to stand before the judgment of God for sin. Jesus stood in that place for me. Isn't that incredible? Would you like to stand before God and try and defend yourself for all the sins you have committed in your life? There's no way you could do that. Forgiveness given by God is absolutely free. But it's not cheap. And we shouldn't treat it cheaply either. It costs Jesus his life. And God offers and gives us forgiveness simply because of his grace. God giving us what we don't deserve. Our God is an awesome God, a loving God, a forgiving God. And because of the sin that separated us from him, he gives us the answer. Well, that's something that we pretty much have heard from childhood in the church. But moving on, forgiveness unconditionally is given to us by God, but forgiveness must also be received. Let me read to you from Acts 13, 38. He says, Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sin is proclaimed to you. Through Jesus, God's forgiveness is proclaimed God's forgiveness is given, but we still must receive it. Let me give to you a a really 
fascinating example of that from our own court system, something I had read during the past week. It was a case that can be found in the US Supreme Court, and it was back in 1833. The case is called United States versus Wilson in 1833. George Wilson was a man who was convicted of robbing the US mail in Pennsylvania. And he was convicted, found guilty, and sentenced to death. After he was sentenced to death and he was waiting to um, lose his life through, um, by, by being killed, his friends appealed to the president, President Andrew Jackson, and they asked him and pleaded with him that he would pardon their friend, George Wilson. President Jackson eventually gave in, and he gave a complete, full pardon to George Wilson. But here's the funny thing. George Wilson refused it. And there was a big uproar by some people who are saying, well, if the president gives a pardon, he's got to take it. And so it became such an issue, they gave it to the court, to the Supreme Court. And they said, you decide what we have to do here. No lie, you can look it up, you can Google it, U.S. versus Wilson, 1833. And Chief Justice Marshall rendered a decision in this case against George Wilson, who refused the pardon. And this is what his decision was. A pardon rejected is no pardon at all, unless the recipient of the pardon accepts the pardon, then the pardon cannot be applied. That's something in the Supreme Court. I, I read that and I sort of smiled and, and I looked, well, this is, how, how'd that ever make it to the Supreme Court? But it made me think, God has offered a pardon to everyone. He has offered forgiveness to everyone. When Jesus died on the cross for our sins, it wasn't for the sins of some, it was for the sins of all. And God freely offers us that pardon and that forgiveness. But some people just haven't received it. We need to learn to receive God's forgiveness when he offers it. It is an incredible, incredible gift. To have our, our slate wiped clean is something totally still blows me away to this day. He doesn't forgive me because I deserve it, because I don't. But he loves me and he forgives me when he offers his pardon and me, by faith in Jesus, reach out and receive that pardon, he forgives me. Sometimes, I still struggle with forgiving myself. Sometimes I carry around some guilt and condemnation over the things that Jesus went to the cross for. And I think I'm not alone. We had a, a friend years ago when Allison and I were part of a home group years before. I was shortly after we were married and hadn't even thought about ministry yet. But I was struggling with some guilt and condemnation and at one of these small groups leading, leading uh, small group meetings, I asked the uh, one pastor who was leading the group, how, how do I get rid of this condemnation? And he asked me a very simple, simple question. He goes, Steve, tell me which is greater, the grace of God or your sins? 
And I said, well, obviously God's grace. And he goes, forgive yourself. He has. When we, from our heart, ask God to forgive us, he freely gives us forgiveness. And what he wants from us is to receive that forgiveness that he offers. It says in Romans 8, 1, that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That doesn't cheapen God's grace. It shows the real meaning of grace. And so when God offers forgiveness, we as his people need to reach out and receive it by faith. Because we cannot bring glory to God in our witness if we walk around feeling condemned. We are not letting God's light shine in us if we are walking around feeling guilty. The world is already feeling guilty. What they need to see is a sinner who has received forgiveness and is no longer under condemnation. That's a witness. So it takes faith, but God gives us faith too to receive what he offers. The next one, the O, that forgiveness is something that is offered to others. This is where it really starts to get hard. In the Lord's Prayer, it starts out, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And all the attention is on God and giving God glory and giving God honor. That's such an important part of our prayer life. And then uh, last week we talked about, give us today our daily bread. Lord, take care of my needs. And then in this section, we say, forgive us as we forgive others. That's hard at times, because now it involves other people. You know, our walk with Jesus sometimes can be so easy when it's just him and us. But when it starts to involve other people, that's where the rubber hits the road. That's where the proof of you, of your Christianity, really shows itself. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Jesus told a parable about a guy who went away and he gave his, uh, the, the stewards under his care that they, he came back and there was one who had debts. He had such an incredible debt. Jesus used the expression of, in today's terminology, it would be millions and millions of dollars. His point was, it was a debt that the man was completely unable to pay back. And the master looked at him, and in his mercy, he looked at him and he goes, I forgive you of that debt. I do not hold this debt against you anymore. That same guy who had just been released of that debt went out and found a guy who, owned him, who owed him a few bucks. And he said to his friend, pay me back. And he wouldn't. He threw him in prison. Angered the master. There's a burden that sometimes goes along with unforgiveness. And here's the interesting thing, the burden that sometimes we carry with unforgiveness is the burden we put on ourselves. When you forgive, when you do not forgive someone else, there's a burden you carry. And when we forgive, God brings us freedom, not just the person you are forgiving. Forgiveness is not a feeling it's a commitment. Imagine if forgiveness were based on feeling. Well, I don't feel like forgiving them. Well, God says, well, that's okay. Wait until you feel like it. It doesn't work that way. Forgiveness is a commitment. That commitment, a commitment is something that God does because that's who he is. And when it comes to us forgiving other people, 
when we realize what we have been forgiven of, when we realize that what we deserve is eternal hell forever and ever, that's what I deserve. But God in his mercy looked at me anyway and said, I know you don't deserve it, but I love you and I forgive you. Now go out and forgive other people the way I have forgiven you. That's what it says in Colossians 3.13. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. It's a choice to show mercy and not to hold a debt or an offense against somebody else. Sometimes we, we've heard this scripture a few times in the Bible that God doesn't remember our sins anymore when he forgives us. It doesn't mean that God is a forgetful God. What it means is that he chooses not to hold that offense against us anymore. Allison and I had a friend early on in our marriage when we had fallen into debt because of failed business, and we had a close friend. She was like a member of the family, an aunt, and she, on her own, came to us and said, listen, I want to just lend you the money to help you in this situation. And she lent us the money and um, so we could pay off the debt, and then we started paying her back every month. And after we had paid for a few months, she came to us, and she goes, listen, I've been praying, and I've been talking to the Lord, and I just feel he wants me to um, just let this whole debt go. You don't owe me anything. I don't hold that debt against you anymore. Now, she didn't forget that we owed her money, but she, in her mind, purposed, I'm not going to hold this against them anymore because I love them, and they're my friends. When we forgive someone, we are making a choice based on faith and God's grace at work in us where we choose not to hold that offense that the other person has done against us. We choose not to hold that against them anymore. And maybe you, I, I know I have had in my talks with the Lord over the years, there was a time where I said, well, they don't, forgive my, they don't deserve my forgiveness. And it was almost as, I almost heard an audible voice. <laughs> He says, and you did deserve my forgiveness? Finally, our witness as Christians depends on us putting forgiveness into practice. I believe that there is no greater witness of who we are as Christians than when we forgive other people. There are lots of things where we show the love and the grace of God. And it takes faith to do a lot of those things. But this is different than maybe giving some money to people who might be poor, or giving some food to someone who might be poor, or helping out a friend doing this and this. We're talking about forgiving people who don't deserve forgiveness. When Jesus hung on the cross, first words out of his mouth, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. First words out of our Savior's mouth on the cross, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. And eventually, that Roman centurion who witnessed all of this said, Surely this has to be the Son of God. When Stephen, the martyr in Acts, was being stoned because of his faith, as the stones were hitting his body, he said, Lord, don't hold these sins against them. And the apostle Paul Saul, at that point, who hadn't yet 
come to know Jesus, was witnessing all of this. And what a conviction it had to be for him to hear the words of Stephen saying, Lord, don't hold his sins against him. Bringing it closer to home, a few months ago, <clears throat> a case that became nationally known was the case of Botham Johns, who was shot by Amber Geiger. And we're all familiar with the case. And in open court, Brant John, Botham John's brother, in public court, spoke up and said, I forgive you to Amber Geiger and asked permission to give her a hug. Now, over the months since then, there has been, I've heard discussion, a discussion about, from Christians too, questioning a lot of what went on. But as I heard, as I heard that the first time, I was so moved. And I realized this, what we witnessed that day God does every single day. God does that every single day. Forgive them. They don't deserve it. They're guilty as sin. But our God is a forgiving God. Forgiveness is a powerful witness. And as Christians, how we treat one another speaks louder than our doctrines and speaks louder than our creeds. It's not that the doctrines and the creeds are wrong, but if the doctrines and creeds are accurate and true, our witness of forgiveness shouts louder than that which is written on a page. If we are self-serving people, if we are unforgiving in our relationships, it's going to have an effect on our witness as Christians. I don't know about you, but after taking time to really look into forgiveness once again, it's funny, sometimes you can, on a particular subject, you might not say it out loud, but in your mind says, yeah, I got this, I got this. And God comes along and says, no, you don't got it yet. And he begins to show us how we need to grow in forgiveness. I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to understand it. When we say, Lord, teach us to grow in forgiveness, what we are saying is that, Lord, teach me how to really embrace the forgiveness that you are giving to us. Help me never to take it for granted. Lord, help me to receive that forgiveness that you offer to me. I know I'm not worthy of it. I know I don't deserve it. But help me to really embrace grace for what it is and receive the forgiveness that you offer to me. Help me to stop beating myself up. And help me, Lord. Oh, Lord, this is where I need your help. That I want to grow in forgiveness to the point where the same thing you have forgiven me of, I want to be able to forgive other people the same way. Lord, teach me how to pray. In a few minutes, we're going to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And near the end of that creed, we say this. We say it week after week. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the fact that God forgives me. I believe that I can reach out by faith and receive God's forgiveness. 
I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe that the sins that God has forgiven me of, I believe that I can reach out by faith in him and forgive other people. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lord, teach me that. Teach me that. And before I let you go, is there anybody you need to forgive? God has given you an opportunity this morning, today, to hear the incredible, wonderful message of forgiveness and how wonderful it is. And if you find it difficult to forgive someone, join the club. God gets that. God knows that. I know that. But when I have those moments, when there are those who I have a difficult time forgiving, this is what I usually say. Lord, you know how I feel. But I know what's right. So I need you to do a major work in my heart so that I will, by faith, be able to release that person from the debt that they have. Help me to be a witness of forgiveness to other people. That, only by the grace of God, we can do. And he will enable us and empower us to do it. Let's pray. Father, thank you. We are so thankful because of Jesus that we don't have to stand before the judgment of all sin and plead our case. Jesus took our sin upon himself and we thank you that you, because you are a gracious and merciful God, reached out and forgiven us. Thank you, Lord. Teach us how to grow in forgiveness. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, would you stand with me and help us pay special, special attention to the confession, something we say a week after week. Help us to take to heart the words of the Apostles' Creed and also the Lord's Prayer that we will pray later on. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body.